David. Hey, who hey, are you at, yeah, man? Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. Thanks for uh, having me out here. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, before we, I kind of ask you some of these questions I've been wanting to ask. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say thank you. You know, mm -hmm. thanks for bringing me out here, allowing me to see Shenzhen, mm -hmm. and uh, more importantly, allowing me to get a real hands-on test with the HD1, which so far from what I've seen has been great. Glad and, you like uh, it. Very exciting technology, mm -hmm. but yeah, I just wanted to say that first of all. Thank you so much for having me out. It's our pleasure to having you here. Great. And uh, it's, it's our team is looking forward to meet you here and have you, have you test our machine and uh, have uh, you tell your audience about our machine. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's great to see how far you've come since we first spoke, which yeah, a lot was, of you a lot of you may not know, but mm. uh, David and I have spoke almost a year ago. Yeah, almost a year ago. Uh, almost and, a year ago uh, and, about this project. And uh, we talked a little bit about it, but not any uh, details. So to mm. see how far you've come has been really exciting. Yeah, at that time, we I talked with your consultant yeah. and uh, collect what user wants, what the pain point of the industry. And right. uh, I was I trying to trying to come up with what what's matter for the users yeah. and what I can do, uh, what I can do to provide something different, innovative for the industry. And the reason you were able to do that, I guess we can kind of get to my first question. Mm -hmm. So, your background hasn't really always been in lasers. Yeah. You have a different background, yeah. you, but you do have a lot of experience in uh, motion control. Tell me a little bit about your, your history and your background. Where did you come from? And more importantly, how did that lead you to start looking into laser engraving machines? Sure, sure. A little bit about me. I actually major in computer science. And after I graduate, I, I joined Snapmaker. And in there, I spent seven years uh, in Snapmaker. I lead the R&D team. Together, we delivered more than 100,000 units worldwide. And Wait, I, so hold on. You were with Snapmaker yeah. for seven years for seven running years. the R&D team. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, that's a remarkable journey. And uh, I really enjoy building community there. And uh, the, we love to make something wonderful and share those spirits with our customer. We, we really join to make something wonderful there. When I start my second journey, I was reflecting on my journey and uh, think about what I have learned from the 3D printing industry. Mm -hmm. Is here is the what I learned is that uh, the speed matter and the uh, innovation always get rewarded. Mm -hmm. So I draw drawing from the seven year experience from 3D printing. Yeah, you, you know, 3D printing have uh, dramatically changed when there is emerging technology. Yeah. So with, with that vision in mind, I set up this bold vision, trying to contribute to the laser engraving, laser industry. Yeah, I can see that there is a lot of influence from your experience with 3D printing put into the, the HD1 laser engraver, especially when it comes to um, a lot of the motion control mm -hmm. uh, features and, and how many different axes are in the machine and how they all work together simultaneously, mm. just yeah. like a 3D printer has yeah. to do. So that's pretty fascinating. With all that experience, out of all the things you could have done, you could have made 3D printers. Mm -hmm. You could have branched away from Snapmaker mm -hmm. and you could have started some kind of a new tech 3D printer mm -hmm. with uh, faster speeds. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, you decided to focus your energy on desktop laser engraving mm -hmm. machines specifically. Smaller, not, not super small, but mm -hmm. smaller desktop machines. So why that choice instead of going into the 3D printing market? Yeah, I think 3D printing has an amazing community and uh, has amazing innovation happen there. When I check laser engraving uh, industry and uh, I, I see potential, and uh, it's, th th this is an amazing community too. This engraving industry did haven't keep up with the uh, innovation, just like 3D printing. Mm. And and uh, I see how I can contribute. So you see some room there. Yeah, you I see, see some room for improvement in there. Yeah, and you feel maybe compared to the 3D printing, yeah, they've really accelerated, mm -hmm. and uh, they're they're filling up those those spaces very quickly. But mm. you feel like there's you know a lot of room to grow in the laser engraving industry. Yeah. 
That's great. So with the Exolaser HD1, what are the top three things that excite you the most about what you've been able to accomplish? The top, because there's a lot of features mm -hmm. and we're gonna yeah. talk we're gonna talk about them in a future video, but mm -hmm. personally for mm -hmm. you, what are the top three innovations that you've mm -hmm. come up with that you enjoy the most? I, I want to describe it in a technical way. Customer can first come into them is three three keyword. Three keyword speed size and versatility mm -hmm. which goes to three key feature of our hd1 which is flying gavel you can run fast dynamic focal module you can do curve engraving and can do 3d engraving 3d gavel this is a 3d gavel and uh, you have a dual laser you can it can cater to a, a wide range of different material yeah yeah three keywords speed size and versatility yep. three, three key technology which is flying gable, 3D gable, and the dual laser. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you 100% mm. that those mm. are three of the top features. Mm. Um, I got to see uh, some of those speed today mm. and some, some tests that we did, which mm. was pretty amazing. And I think later we're gonna do some of the 3D Galvo. We're mm -hmm. gonna do some mapping of mm -hmm. different heights of different objects in there. Mm -hmm. And that's exciting. Yeah. And the size, mm -hmm. you know, that's important because, um, you know, regular Galvo fiber lasers are mm -hmm. limited to the, the field of the yeah. lens. Yeah. But because you've uh, integrated a flying Galvo, mm -hmm. we're able to utilize the whole, you know, uh, we're talking inches, you know, 12 inches mm -hmm. by 24 inch yeah. bed yeah. with the flying Galvo. So that means your fiber laser engraving capabilities just got a lot bigger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't choose between the size and the speed. You get That's it right. all. You, you, get you get it all. You get both. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to choose between the size and the speed. Yeah. You get it all because of that, that one innovation right there. Yeah. The flying Galvo. Head. Yeah. Flying 3D Galvo. Actually, we go one way uh, beyond the industry because flying Galvo, flying Galvo already get the speed right, and the the 3D Galvo get the speed of Z axis very fast, but the, kind of too technical Let, let's move on okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay one of the biggest challenges that i've seen with lots of different companies coming onto the market mm -hmm. it's a challenge it's not it's not hard but one of the biggest challenges is after sales support mm -hmm. now especially being an overseas company yeah so it's challenging to support your customers in a yeah. me meaningful way yeah where if they have an issue or mm -hmm. a question they don't have to wait three days for a response. You mm -hmm. know, I know that's always been a, a pain point in working with uh, companies overseas. Do you have any kind of plans for that on how you plan to have quality aftermarket support yeah. and education? Yeah. I'm curious if you're gonna have any educational videos for someone who maybe doesn't have as much experience as me but really wants to use your product. Yeah. Some very nice tutorials on how to get started. Yeah. Yeah. I think you, you are, what you are saying, support is a crucial pillar in this business. What we're doing in support is learning from you, learning from the industry, learning from our own experience. You, you appraise those companies that have a better support. Okay, so we're learning yeah. from the leading company that we plan to have a US local support as soon as possible. When we finish our Kickstarter project and we will start building EU and uh, US local support. That'll be great. Yeah, and uh, also we're learning from our past experience. I've been in 3D printing industry and the community is very important. The content, we will lead the community to build a healthy community to let, let people have fun with their project. And uh, also we're learning, learning the operation experience is because some companies, they just don't have the enough experience or capability to running the project in long term. They don't yeah. take into account of uh, supporting people. But you do. Yeah, from that I do. Yeah, we <laughs> we're learning from past experience, and uh, we plan it ahead. We already take those costs in account. Mm -hmm. We need to put that in beforehand, so that we can have a long-term relationship with our user. Okay. Very nice. Okay. What are your hopes for the company? Obviously, you want the company to be successful. We all know that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I think you're off to a great start. But where do you see Exolaser five years from now? Uh, I can see Exolaser in five years. I hope we can play an important role in the desktop fabrication tools, driving by technology innovation and becoming a responsible brand that was recognized by the, our customer, our user. Yeah. And uh, we can build a company that can make our employee proud of what they are doing mm. by 
creating values for our customer and build a healthy community around this brand. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's why. <laughs> yeah. That's why vision for the for yeah for Excel Laser. That's one of the things I like about you most is that you're a realistic guy. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a very realistic answer. Mm -hmm. David, thank you for taking the time to talk yeah. to me, man. Yeah. All right. Thanks. See you guys on the next one.